You know what this is. You're rocking with the best thoughts of the week. Let's get it. Everybody. Welcome to Thoughts of the Week podcast. Today, um, I'm going to show you guys uh, a video that I took. You guys know that um, a lot of new developing situations have occurred, which includes um, schools kind of shutting down for a couple of weeks or longer, right? And so, there are a lot of adjustments to be made. Now, before I get into the video, I definitely wanna say that when it comes to black people, all of this stuff that's going on, from what I'm gathering, from what I'm seeing, and from what I'm noticing, is that this is nothing to us because within our DNA, we always had to struggle with things and be able to be able to improvise with a lot of stuff so when things like this happens when there's shutdowns of stores and and uh, schools and stuff like that it's nothing to us but a lot of other people are getting really shook up and bent out of shape because their ancestors hadn't didn't have to deal with stuff like this. But within our DNA, we had to deal with living with less, the mistreatment and having to improvise, having to adapt. So adapting is in our DNA, all right? Adapting is in our DNA. And so it's easy for us to do so. And so I just thought I want, I just thought I'd put that out there real quick could go even further with that but I'm just gonna leave it like this where again like I said things shutting down we know how to ration out food we know how to um, make things last longer we make a little bit last longer and so it's nothing to us and so a lot of people are getting um, are looking at us other races of people are looking at us acting getting upset because we're acting like you know it's no big deal to us we don't care about what's going on you know we're just adapting and, and keeping it moving and people are, like I said a lot of people from different races are looking at us like something wrong with us but the fact is something is wrong with them they didn't have to go through a lot of those struggles and so anyway we're gonna take a look at this video and it's of a black teacher who is, because um, as you guys know, they they, call, they they closed the schools down, most, most schools. And so the teachers, whether public, private, or otherwise, have to teach online. And that's a whole, that's another different uh, podcast I could go into, which in a way, to me, I think that's great because I've kind of just being observant that's what things were heading, heading to anyway, which is cool because that's where online courses come in. That's where if schools decide to adopt that down the road, you could be at home and teach your kids from your home, still working for a school. So I think it's dope to me, but other people might, you know, there's some differences and we can get into that on another podcast maybe. Maybe I'll interview some uh, a couple of teachers and, um, just see what their thoughts are on that. I think that'll be another, that'll be a good podcast show. So you're gonna watch a video where, and for those who are listening to the podcast, you're gonna be listening to a teacher. She's gonna be at home because they were tasked to uh, go online live using Zoom and you know teach the students until further notice. And um, other teachers are allowed to 
just upload videos and then the students can come in on whatever platforms they use for the students. They are able to just go in and take a look at the videos and get their studies from whatever videos they watch. So, but uh, like I said, this group of teachers from the uh, Wilson Academy in Georgia um, have to go on live and teach their students for so long. I don't know how long, but you're gonna you're gonna listen for those who are listening to the podcast. Some of you're gonna watch it. You're gonna watch about seven minutes of it. Then I'm gonna give them a I'm gonna give a quick interview to the teacher, and then I'm gonna give an interview to a student who is a student that is one of the students that have to go up online and just take a look at the the videos and whatever and whatever other material he has to uh deal with all right so sit back and relax and just check this out and of course leave a comment below the video let me know what you think if you know any teachers man um any teachers who might be listening or watching this if you're listening to it feel free to go to um well, I tell you what, I'm going to put my uh, text number on the screen for you guys. That way, if you have any comments, you can text me. And um, by the way, my uh, before we get into the video, there is going to be a new phone number for the call-in show. And I'll be announcing that pretty soon. It actually is the same number as the text message, but it only will be available when I go live. So... Otherwise, it's just going to go to text. Anytime you try to call the number, you can listen to the voice message, but immediately after you hang up, it'll send you a text message. So just giving you the heads up, if you decide to call the number, it won't be, uh, I won't answer it unless it's a live show. All right. So with that being said, let's check out this, uh, it's about seven minute video. And then two quick interviews, one with a teacher and one with a student, all right? You're rocking with the best thoughts of the week. Let's get it. How you all were for your first class. But right now, it is very calm. How did you get a phone call through that? All right, so women's suffrage. What do you all think this part of women's suffrage is about? Green tomatoes. Okay, what else? White, White people. people fighting for the Which right were we fighting for this time? This one is a specific right. pancakes are good. Voting. How'd you know, Maya? Huh? Very good. This one is for voting. So these women went through, it started in 1848. No, you know that Stephen's in the wrong class. Stephen's in the wrong class. <laughs> I don't know how to get him in here. Um, I don't have his phone number. Sorry, Stephen. All right, I'm gonna keep going, and I'll catch up. I'll catch up with Stephen. So this started. This movement started because women in the 1848s, and it was beyond, even before then. This is just when they got their voice strong enough to kind of be heard. So they were just tired of being um, looked down on socially. They were tired of get, getting looked down on economically and politically so they basically wanted a voice they wanted a vote to have a higher paying job instead of working in the factories they were tired of staying at home keeping the babies and cooking so they wanted to vote because they wanted they wanted to start being like in the government you know vote for me i can do this for the women i can do that for the women so that, that's what this woman's suffrage was basically about, the right to vote. Now you have four women 
that are like your activists, your reformers. What's the white woman's name? Uh, what's her name? What's that little white woman? Uh, this is all the advertising. What is her name? Which one? Susan B. Susan B. Anthony. Susan B. Anthony. She might be your different activist. And we'll talk about, well, as you do your work today, you'll kind of find out why Susan B. was different than Lucretia Mott, Lucy Stone, and Elizabeth Caddy Stanton. So first of all, these women, huh? Everyone's breaking up. Maybe it's just my fault. Okay, I'll be quiet. No, it's time for your to go. Ooh, Carol! Shots fired, shots fired, bang, bang. They talking about my Android. <laughs> <laughs> you so mean. You got your stuff. That's why I'm trying to talk very slowly. Yes, Natalia. What? I saw your hand raised. Yes. Never mind. Your hand was raised. Never mind, Natalia. So anyway, when you do your further investigation today, I want you to find out what the significance of, was of, with Seneca Falls Convention. Somebody else has their hand raised. Let me see who these hands are. I have no idea. Don't repeat whatever you said. London, yes, baby. S S E N E C A. Oh, we have to share this. I don't know how. Uh huh. It's, it's in your Google Classroom, so it's in your notes. Seneca Falls Convention. Yes, Marcus. Yes, Maya. You know what? Y'all don't want any questions. Y'all just raising your hands. Okay, the four ladies are Susan B. Anthony, Lucretia Mott, Lucretia, L U C R E T I A. All right, so check this out. Uh, since the coronavirus, uh, the school system has pretty much been shut down and they're sending teachers home to teach. And some teachers are able to do videos and post it up. And then the kids will come, the students will come and pick up on that, look at those videos, learn what they got to learn and what other things they need to do. And then that'll be their learning day while other teachers are or having to teach live. And so one of the platforms they're using is Zoom. And I understand you was teaching some kids, some students today on Zoom. So what was your experience and how did you like it? Um, my first time using it. So I was a little nervous, but after my first class, which was at 8.15, they, you know, kids are very, uh, savvy when it comes to technical issues but they were savvy we got through it I kind of learned from them some things as well but it was fine I enjoyed it I could do this for a living okay so you actually like this particular way of teaching do you like would you like to do it live or would you prefer making videos and then posting it up for the students or would you do it like a combination of the two combination of the two I would still prefer to make my video and put it up because you don't have as many interruptions because when you're live and you have 18 14 through 18 year olds it's just it's a lot of interruptions so when I pre-record it it's no interruptions and then they can go back and see it as many times as they want to whereas you're live it's one time if you miss it then they have to contact me or it's just it's just too many interruptions when it's live. Right. All right. Well, we appreciate your interview, and we're gonna show a little bit of footage of you actually uh, doing your thing in action. And um, we appreciate your interview.
Thank you. Have a great day, sir. All right. What's your last name? Mott. Mott. Yes. Lucy Stone. How do, you, how do you spell Lucy? The mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm not playing with you. Elizabeth Stanton. Stanton. Uh huh. Now, this is already. This is already in your Google Classroom, in your notes. If you wanted to look back at your Google Classroom, okay. it's already in there. Okay, I have another question. Yes, baby. Yes, so those four women that we just talked about, Those were like your strong leaders to help lead the other women to like conventions, to marches, to things like that. And yes, they did go to Seneca Falls in New York. Are we just supposed to write those questions down? Yes. Okay. Hi. Hi. Um, so I have a question. Yes. Um, so I have a question. Now. This is what you are going to do. This is what you are responsible today after you get out of this classroom. This is what I want today from you all about four o'clock. All right. So again, again, we're going to look at things from a student's perspective. We looked at it from a teacher's perspective. Now we're going to look at it from a student's perspective. All right. So. I got a few questions for you, man, for this interview. And one of them is, since you have to do work, schoolwork from home, how do you like the schoolwork from home compared to uh, going to school? Uh, well, doing schoolwork at home, uh, I can stay in my clothes that I slept in. I can be more comfortable. I can focus more on my work. And... I can focus on each subject and it's easier than just sitting there for hours and hours just listening to the teachers ramble on. I could just go watch a video that they send and learn the subjects from there and then type notes instead of just listening to the teachers for hours on, on end. Alright. So is um so is every class on here, are you going? Are you learning from every class, or only specific classes are putting up? Every class uh, is on here that I have to take is on here. All right. So now let me ask you this: Would you want to do? Would you want to be at home since since you like it better to be at home and, and learning this way? Would you rather just do the videos, or would you be into or interested in having to go on live with with the teachers, even if? You did some classes live and some classes just look at videos or you just want to do all video or all live? Uh, I'd rather do some classes live and some classes where I just watch videos. That would be better for me to do. Okay. What, what classes in particular would you be interested in doing live classes with on? Uh, maybe my math class. So, because I like my math teacher. He's good at explaining things and I'd rather hear him talk about it than somebody on YouTube or something like that. And maybe my economics teacher, because he has a good way of explaining uh, certain things in economics, and I'd rather hear him say it. All right. Do you have any uh, physical gym, like gym classes at all? Well, per I don't have a gym class. I take ROTC. Okay. And now, what the things that you do in ROTC, are you able to actually do them on the computer or you'd have to do some things in person right we sometimes we do have to do things in person like wear a certain uniform and do PT or physical training um, but majority of what we do in ROTC is online so we learn how to be a better citizen before we get out of high school okay okay um, let me see here what else can we ask you here um, would this be something that you would uh, if the school administration did a poll, 
like for all the students in the school, the entire school, and they said, hey, we want to know if y'all would rather go online and come at home, you know, do your classes at home, or would you want to come in school? Let's say they give you three choices. Let's say they say, all right, we want to know if you go, we didn't want to do all your classes at home. That's one choice. Another one is go to school. And then the other one is a combination where for certain purposes, you have to go to school and then maybe you get off earlier than you normally would and then finish up the rest at home. Which one would you decide you want to go with? Well, I think the third option would be best where I could do some work at home and then end up having to go to school on some days. I think that would be best for me. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I know when you said ROTC, so that's probably one of the classes you definitely, or one of the times you have to go to the school for even a, just a short period of time when you have to do uniform and stuff like that. And then I guess you would have to, uh, the other stuff you could do at home. All right. Well, I think that's it. Have anything else? Well, definitely appreciate your interview. And uh, maybe we'll check on you again and see how things go. Anyway, let me see one more thing here. Um, what do you think about the uh, coronavirus situation? Uh, it's, it's, I feel bad for the people who have family members who are sick from the corona. Um, I just wish them well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I just hope everybody's okay and doesn't go on for too long where it's a, too much of a problem All than right. it is now. All right, man. We appreciate it. This is Thoughts of the Week, and we out. Peace.